Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a great day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name's Taylor. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I generally feature content that's focused on knitting and spinning. And in today's video, I wanna share with you fiber. <laughs> this is gonna be a semi-stash flash. I'm gonna talk about different fibers that you can purchase online and the differences between them. So we're gonna go into kind of breed specific things. We're gonna go into preparation details. I hope that this video is informative for you all out there who are maybe new to spinning or new to purchasing fibers online so that you can maybe make better informed decisions or at least have clarified expectations of what you're getting into when choosing different types of things. The first thing I wanna get into is combed top merino. Combed means that it is worsted prep, meaning that all of the fibers are generally structured in one direction. Um, so it gives you a smoother yarn, a more resilient yarn, and it's a little bit easier to spin if you're a beginner, in my opinion. That is not to say that all combed top fibers are easy to spin. This is undyed. I purchased this from Oval, which is an organic uh, provider. They make yarn, but they also distribute undyed fiber. And I think that you can buy it, you know, by the pound maybe. And the more pounds you purchase, it comes together in a single kind of braid here. So this is multiple braids. Uh, very often you'll find them in like a four ounce braid like this one. This is from Neighborhood Fiber Company, which is a local to me dyer. Neighborhood Fiber Company is known for their bold colors and deep saturation. One thing that can be said about fibers that are dyed when unspun is that they get a little bit felted together. I'm going to show you here at the end of the braid. There's these little ends here and it can be a little bit more difficult to draft because there's a slight felting on the circumference of the braid. So you might get a little less consistent yarn. You might get a few more little um, noils or nets in it. You can see one right there, perhaps. Neighborhood Fiber Company specializes in dyeing yarns, but dabbles in dyeing braids of fiber. And I've noticed that those who dabble in the dyeing of fiber will offer results more similar to this than those out there who only sell dyed fiber alone. This is a braid from Nest Fiber Company. I've already started spinning a little bit from it. I actually didn't have any intention behind that, so I quickly put that project on a halt. I realized too that spinning yarn from combed top is not my favorite, and I'll go into why just a little later, but this is a gorgeous braid with gorgeous colors, and I do find that people who dye fiber alone, the, the makers who are more specialized in just dyeing fiber, very often give you the best results. Um, the fiber is somehow processed in a way that is a little bit more gentle, and I do find less felting of the fiber itself. And I just have to say, it is far more pleasurable to spin yarn that is easy to draft. Fiber that is a little bit felted, even in the slightest, can be a bit tedious. What I do recommend is pre-drafting. You want to kind of draft the fiber in advance of sitting down to spin it. And what I typically do is draft a few yards onto my lap and then spin. So I kind of pause, draft, spin, pause, draft, spin. I was lucky to inherit a stash from a friend of a friend. She owned a fiber shop in the area and closed it down. And so one day my friend invited me over and said, you can have anything you want. And I'm about to show you my haul of one ounce samples of various fibers. I'm gonna give you close-ups of each of these so that you can see in detail what the fiber construction is. So we're gonna change the camera angle here and I'm gonna give you close-ups of each different fiber and tell you a little bit about them. Here we have Tessa Silk Top. Tessa Silk is a little bit more of a creamy color silk fiber. 
I like to spin silk blended with wool so that it has the gorgeous lustrous quality of silk, but we add the crimp and the squish factor of wool to the yarn uh, because those are the garments I like to knit, the squishy warm ones. So as you can see, this fiber has a great amount of drape. It gives a drapey yarn when spun alone, but with a blend of wool, you get the best qualities of both. It is somewhat easy to draft, but it will give a very dense and ropey like yarn if you're not an expert spinner and you haven't blended it with some other fiber to give it some amount of air within it. Here I have a sample of a merino silk blend. This is the best of both worlds. You have the lustrousness of silk fibers, but you also have the airiness and the lightness of wool. These undyed fibers are very easy to draft and the worsted prep of this combed top will give you a nice even yarn, great for beginner spinners. And I highly, highly recommend a silk blend for new spinners starting out with silk. Here I have a trio of Coopworth. These fibers are woolen prepped. So there is a difference between the worsted and woolen prep. I've talked about this in almost every video I've made so far. Woolen prepped fiber is carded on a drum carder or a machine carder, and it has the fibers in every direction. So it's kind of like a blanket of fiber and you can draft it just the same. Some people spin from the fold with woolen spun yarns. So you just kind of fold it over your finger like that. And this fiber, as you can tell, will give a lot more air between the fibers as you draft it. So you can spin a woolen yarn with a woolen prepped fiber. This Coopworth comes in many different shades of white and gray and something in between by blending the two. A lot of the times with these natural color blends, you have some variegation to it. It's not perfectly blended um, all the time. Sometimes it will be, and you can blend it even further to get a more even blend, um, but you will get some variegation to your spinning if you don't make sure that it's blended 100%. I like to play with color when using mixed fibers like this and do something like a marled effect. I think I might be spinning these separately though for something like a color work project one day. I haven't made up my mind yet. Here I have a medley of alpaca fiber. The fibers are nice and long. They have a long staple, but like wool, they don't have much crimp at all trying to find the beginning of this here. You can spin this on the fold, as I just shown you, or you can do a combination spin where like a worsted prepped fiber, you spin from the tip, either forward draw or backwards draw. Personally, I don't find a huge difference. I spin a combination of forward and backward draw. I let the fiber between my hands kind of dictate which direction it needs to move as the wheel picks up the fiber. Here we have a natural white, a natural gray, a nice light brown kind of fawn color, and a natural black, which is actually brown. I don't think you'll ever find a true, true black in a natural fiber form. It's almost always brown. Although I do have a raw fleece that is the closest thing to black I have ever seen and that is for another video. I'm not gonna go into my raw wool here in this. It's all prepared fiber for you. Here I have a white Falkland top. This is not as fine as other merino tops, but it is nice and soft. It's very airy and it is a worsted prep fiber, but it's so bouncy that it almost looks like it's woolen prepped, but the fibers are in one direction. The micron count is not the same as those super fine merinos, so it is not quite as soft as those, but it does draft nice and easy. The general structure of this fiber just being a little bit stronger and with a more kind of open crimp is gonna give potentially more air into a worsted spun yarn. 
similar, but not at all the same. I have Fin Top here. Now Fin is a uh, different breed of sheep, has a very long staple and a very strong fiber. Again, top being worsted prep, all the fibers are in one direction. It will likely kind of make a little bit of a ropey feel if you're not careful in spinning it with that worsted effect. I likely will spin this worsted prep fiber from the fold to give it more of a woolen spun um, finish to the yarn and capture more air in the structure of that yarn. Here I have a sample of gray Icelandic top. This yarn is sturdier than any other. It is soft, but not quite as soft as the others I've shown you. And it is a worsted prepped fiber. All the fibers are generally in the same direction, but because of the nature of the crimp of this fiber, there's a lot of air between the fibers, um, even being that worsted prepped method. So easy to draft, easy to turn into a rope if you're only doing a worsted spin. I, like the others, will very likely spin this from the fold. Here we have a black Norwegian top. Of all the fibers so far, it is most similar to the gray Icelandic top, um, but it is a little bit more hmm, dense. It has a stronger structure to the fiber. It feels like it would really make a better kind of rug yarn, to be honest. Not something I wanna wear against maybe my neck, but would make lovely gloves or house slippers, something that's very hard wearing and resilient. Here I have Yak Top, also worsted prep. The yak fiber is very, very fine. You can see that the staple length is minimal. Um, this is something that I will definitely need to use a very short forward draw if spinning alone, but I would very likely blend this fiber with another in my stash. It is not at all uniform. I am having a really hard time getting the lighting right for this video, but you'll see that the fibers have a mix of this and that within it. The yak fiber is almost, I think it's from like the belly of the yaks, if I'm not mistaken. It is a super fine, downy type of fiber. And then mixed in it are little bits of hair, little bits of debris. So this is gonna be great for blending with other fibers. It is similar to cashmere in that the staple length is almost nothing. It is incredibly soft and incredibly warm. Finally, we have a medley of Shetland wool. Shetland is a dual coat breed. So it has this fine wool that you see here, very soft, nice and resilient, um, but it also has these kind of guard hairs, I believe, or maybe you would call it Kemp. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not an expert in Shetland sheep, but those are generally plucked out and removed to use in other preparations of wool, but what spinners typically gather are the finer fibers. This appears to be a worsted prep. Um, it doesn't say top on the packaging, it just says fine gray Shetland, fine black Shetland, fine brown Shetland, and fine white Shetland. So these are all natural colors. This gray is very well blended. Same with the brown. I find that they're both nice and blended evenly throughout. And of course the um, natural black Shetland is not at all black. It is very much brown. As I mentioned, you rarely get a pure black natural fiber. I almost forgot to show you this black mohair top. It feels like human hair. And I think that's because mohair is hair. <laughs> um, it is not wool, it has no crimp. It's like silk and that is very lustrous and very strong, but it is much heavier. It has a certain density to it and it's very fuzzy and gorgeous. Definitely going to spin this in a blend of fibers for sure. That is it for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it, and please subscribe if you have not already. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.
take care. Editing Taylor here. I forgot to tell you what is my favorite fiber to spin and that is hand combed washed fleece. I find that hand combed fiber has a little bit more space worked in between the fibers and so it's just much easier to draft. It spins like nothing, um, nothing else. So that's my favorite. If you want to 